the Hercules launch pads have uh, CAN buses on them and I have two versions of the launch pad. I have the Make 1 and the Make 2. The Make 1 is the more simple version and the earliest version and it has two CAN uh, controllers on there so you can make one CAN controller talk to the other. Uh, the new version of the Hercules launch pad, the Make 2, it has three CAN controllers. And what I'll be doing now is I'm going to make uh, the two CAN buses on this uh, launch pad talk to each other. I'm going to make two CAN buses and maybe three on this launch pad talk together. And if it works out, I'm also going to make one launch pad talk to the other one via CAN. The example that I'll be using is the one from uh, Halkogen. I'm going to use the CAN example with interrupts. Uh, it's also easy to use the one without interrupts. But while we're at it, let's just uh, go for the, the second one. You can get at the examples by using the help help topics menu. And when you do that, uh, it opens uh, a set of documents. And part of that documentation set is uh, a number of examples. And here the example can interrupt communication is the one that we're going to use. So we'll set this project up for both the make one and the make two uh, launch pad and probe what's happening. Hey, and before we try the example we'll first build up our design and to do that let's first have a look at the schematic of the launch pad and see what we need. I'm going to do this exercise with the launch pad make one and a bit later we'll do it with the make two too. Um, what we need is access to the CAN1 and CAN2 send and receive pins. They are listed here. Normally you need a CAN line driver that translates this send and receive signals into balanced line signals. But we're going to do a simplified setup here, so let's first look how we can get at those signals. Uh, they go out of the microcontroller on these pins here, and they're available on the launchpad make one on the jumper 10. There are four pins on the jumper 10 that represent the CAN1 and CAN2 send and receive. The design that I'm talking about doesn't come from myself. I haven't invented it. It's documented in Siemens application note 2921. Uh, the, top, the top image that you see here coming from that note is a typical design for a, a CAN setup. And the bottom picture is a simplified setup and that's a setup that you can use if you're using CAN on a PCB or for test setups. I wouldn't advise you to use this design in a car uh, but when we're probing signals on a launch pad this works very much. Uh, the only thing you need is one diode per CAN controller um, and it works quite well. I've been testing it before and we're going to test it again here with Texas Instruments example. These are the components that I'm going to use in my exercise. A launchpad make one. I'll also use a make two a bit later. Um, and I have soldered a female header on connector 10 because that makes the exercise easier. It's not necessary, but it helps. A random resistor. This one is 10K. You can go anywhere between 3K and I don't know how much. A tiny breadboard, two diodes, one per can controller and uh, some of this prototyping wire. And this is the complete setup for the tiny breadboard. Let's say that this is the CAN plus line. I have put the two receiving lines for CAN A and CAN B on here. Uh, the two diodes for the transmitters and the pull-up resistor. And the pull-up resistor is tied to the positive uh, voltage. I'm going to use 3.3 volt. And the two diodes are uh, connected to the two uh, trans transmit lines for CAN uh, A and CAN B. I've also put a uh, ground wire here which I'm going to use when I'm probing the signals with the logic analyzer and an oscilloscope later. So now that the breadboard is ready I'm going to connect uh, the signals to uh, connector 10. I'm going to use one of these for the ground. Um, the plus 3.3 volt is available here on pin 2. Uh, the CAN 1 send and receive are on 25 and 26. The receive will directly go to the white wire and the common CAN plus line. 
the send part, the transmit part, will go via the diode. Same for uh, CAN2, the transmit will go to that second diode and the receive line will go directly to the CAN plus signal. So this is it, the full setup. The two common receive lines are going to the right pins here on connector 10. Uh, the same for the transmit lines, but they go f uh, to the CAN plus signal via the two diodes and are on the left side of that connector. Ground is connected to one of the bottom pins here and I have connected the pull-up resistor to the plus 3.3 volt of that same connector 10. And that's it for this video. We have now got a complete setup of the hardware. In the next video I'll be making the project in Halcogen and in Code Composer Studio by following the examples of the, code, the Halcogen help file. We'll then run that example, see what it does in memory and we'll also have a look at the signals in the oscilloscope and on the logic analyzer. See you!